Welcome to Create Your Own Light, where we harness our past, we embrace our future, and learn to conquer the roadblocks along the way together. I'm your host, Travis Howes. Let's get on with it. Welcome back to episode seven of Create Your Own Light. Um, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for supporting this up until this point. It um, truly means a lot to look at the downloads and see that you guys are checking it out and engaging, and I really appreciate all the questions that have been flying in. Um, today, I'm going to talk about PTSD and addiction and slash substance abuse, and also came up with this cool idea to talk about investing in your mental wealth. Think about that for a second. Um Many times throughout life, we invest, and we invest in our financial future uh, for becoming financially wealthy. But how do we invest in becoming mentally wealthy? I'll get into a few um, few topics that I kind of jotted down on some notepads. So you're going to hear some papers ruffling today. I have uh, notes all over the place, uh, crammed all over my desk. And we'll get into that. But... Dude, I just got back from the gym and, um, man, I'm telling you what, I'm 42 and every time I go there, that shit just gets heavier and heavier. And I used to be the young guy in the gym and I'd see the old dudes in the gym. I'm like, man, you can tell that dude used to be in shape. And now I'm that dude that used to be in shape, (laughs) but I'm okay with it. I'm all right with it. It's just not about being big and strong anymore. It's about being happy and flexible and being able to pick my children up. Um, there was a time several years ago where I was in so much pain uh, with my back that I couldn't even lift my kids up. And uh, that was pretty sad. So I'm just working on uh, being healthier now, just all around mentally um, and physically, not not just trying to be some big dumb ox that can pick up a car because I don't need to pick up a car off of anybody anymore. I just, I honestly just want to be able to pick up my kids after a soccer game when they win without throwing my damn back out. I also have discovered I need to get a new office chair because this office chair, although it's nice and it's rolling around, it makes a lot of noise when I move. So you know me, I'm not editing that stuff out. Here's the deal, man. Um, Last episode, we were talking about entrepreneurism, and, and again, I, could, I wouldn't be able to spell that, the entrepreneurial mindset, and I always had that. I, I loved making my own money, and I think it started when I was real early uh, in, in life. I was 15, and I, would, I actually worked for my father, and my father was a golf course superintendent, okay, and for like 35 years, something like that, and I would work the summers for him for $5 an hour, and it was brutal. Down here in South Carolina, man, we had triple-digit heat. We had triple-digit humidity, and I know people out west, man, they always say, man, you ain't, you ain't, you don't know no heat. Come out to fucking Arizona. Motherfucker, I've been to Arizona, and I would laugh at the heat out there because you don't have the humidity we have here. You don't know anything about heat until you're sweating through your drawers, and it's not even 9 in the morning yet. How many of you out there down south in, in these hot, humid climates, these subtropical climates, pack extra draws when you go to work? I know I did. When I was a fireman, I had to take three uniforms every shift because if we even had one call to where we had to throw our, um, what we call our bunker gear or our protective clothing on, and he, it turned out to even be a false alarm three minutes into the ride, you were completely drenched. We didn't have air conditioners in our truck back then either, but that's a whole other story for another day. Um brings me back to being an entrepreneur. So it started when I was 15. I used to work for my father and $5 an hour, five, I think it was like 535 or something like that. And, um, after work, we would get off around three o'clock every day, three 30. And after work, I started going around to, um, some of these homes on the golf course and asking them if I could clean their roofs off. Cause these are older people a lot of times. And then they had leaves and pine straw on their roofs and they, they were like, hell yeah. So I charged 15 to $25 just depending some of these were some pretty big ass roofs and I would actually drive one of the golf cart buggies after work up there. Cause my dad stayed after to do his paperwork and all that. And I take my blower and I take a ladder and I'd go down there and I'm, man, I'd, I'd knock out a hundred bucks, do, you know, five, six, seven roofs before, you know, it got dark eight o'clock at night. And my dad would wait on me cause he knew I was just out there being a little hustler. So I would realize really quickly that, man, I'm making more money for myself with complete freedom, not answering to anybody, then I am clocking in for somebody. I'd go and clock in at my little golf course job 
And it was rough, man. I was weed eating ditches. Um, a lot of times they had snakes in them, like venomous snakes, um, little baby alligators. This is no bullshit, man. And you'd be in the hot sun pulling weeds for five thirty-five an hour, or I can go jump on this roof and knock it out in 10 or 15 minutes and make me 15 bucks. Oh, by the way, tax free, baby. <clears throat> it didn't take long to develop a mindset that I need to work for myself. So what I'm getting at is in episode six, I tried a bunch of things in my life. Um, I told you about the hot dog cart, right? That was hilarious. But I think one of the funniest things that I ever came up with is now don't judge. These are just thoughts, right? Because in order to be, I think in order to be successful, we have to have an open mind frame, right? We can't always do the same thing over and over. You have to expand your mind. You have to learn. You have to think about things, think outside of the box. Um, and I've always been an outside thinker. I came up with this clever idea one time. This is nasty, though. If you don't want to hear something nasty, I'm going to give you five seconds to turn your radio down or whatever you're listening to your phone. Okay, if you're still listening, you're fucked. Here we go. So my idea for a successful business was to have a mobile glory hole. <laughs> Think about it, right? If you don't know what a glory hole is, now I never did this. But it was fun to think about. If you don't know what a glory hole is, go go look it up. Now, I was a marina cop and a fireman. That's how I know what that is because you, you just talk about stupid stuff like that all the time. And every once in a while, videos would pop up um, and we would make fun of them. So, glory hole essentially is when a man goes up to a wall and, um, well, there's a hole in it. And he just explores what's on the other side of that hole with his, um, you can use your imagination. But here's the hard part. A general, in general construction, right? Residential, a wall is four and a half inches wide because a two by four is in the middle of that wall and that's three and a half inches wide. And then you have a half inch of sheetrock on both sides, making it four and a half inches. Now, I know what you're thinking. Travis, not everybody can fit all the way through a four and a half inch wall. This is true. And this is where my entrepreneurial mindset comes in. So, if you didn't have, if you were not endowed enough to make it all the way through the four and a half inches, well, you were just left in kind of like the black abyss and the void in, inside of the wall. You were just kind of left dangling in the middle of the wall. Now, for those that are fortunate enough to make it through the other side of the wall, the problem is you just don't know what's on the other side. That's the big secret, and that's the big taboo thing that I guess <laughs> glory holes are fun for. I don't know. I've never wit witnessed it or never visited one, but... Check out the mobile glory hole. The, more, the mobile glory hole comes to you. It's essentially, it's just a van. It's a, it's a willing employee, somebody that enjoys that type of work that would come to your location, wherever you are. And we don't have two by four walls. We would actually have a booth and it would be uh, made out of poster board, um, which is like a 16th inch thick. And that way there's no discrimination. That way everybody gets to enjoy the mobile glory hole. Now this just got weird and I probably lost a lot of listeners. But that's all right, because look, chances are the people that want to hear this, what I have to say, they're on board. They, they get it, man. This is These are just jokes. And we're military and fire and police, and we're associated with those people, so we're an extra kind of fucked up. Sorry, I'm having my post-workout shake. I think the scary thing about the mobile glory hole would be, though, is when if you came up to it for a service and you saw, um, like, um lips and like a mustache or something coming through. <laughs> Woo! This is where <clears throat> this is going to be that kind of episode. Look. I have I got to be honest. I tried to record this last night. I did episode 7 from my office. I recorded the whole thing. I'm doing it on YouTube now too, so I'm doing video with the audio and my inexperience showed last night. I hit record on the camera and never hit record on the computer. And I talked to myself for 30 minutes, 30, 33 minutes, something like that. <sighs> That's a little unsettling. So now I got to try this all over again. Um, and I don't have a, uh, a run of show, if you will. I'm, I just, I work as my brain operates, which is, you can tell it's kind of weird. I had a I had a um, a question on Instagram, and 
this gentleman asked me to speak about PTSD and addiction and substance abuse. Now, I'm not going to be on this for too long because I didn't experience addiction to to anything. Um, I, however, did use alcohol as a as a major crutch in my life for a long time, and I've been completely sober for over nine years now. I, I just decided one day that, all right, this is enough. I don't need to use this. Um, if I'm going to be stronger in my life, I can't use a crutch. I need to stand on my own. And I think I'm fortunate. I don't have an addictive personality. Um, and I think that was, that was very helpful for me. Um, but those that have addictive personalities, I don't want to pretend like I know what your struggle is or what you go through because I don't know how hard that is to want to really quit something and not be able to do it. But I do know this. I do know if you make excuses, you're never going to be able to move forward. I Maybe I was addicted for a while, but I was addicted to excuses. Let's, let me back that up. I wasn't addicted to a substance. I think I was addicted to uh, excuses and I was finding a reason to validate why I was weak and why I couldn't move on and be happy. So there, I'm transparent and honest. That was that was my addiction, but I kicked that. I realized that, look, man, nobody's coming for you. Nobody is going to do this thing for you. There's a lot of help out there. There's a lot of resources available. Look, I'm a resource. You can message me all day long, and I get those, but ultimately, I can't make the decision for you. Um, you can buy my book. It's a tangible resource, but again, it's not going to get you off your ass. It's not going to make you walk away from a, a whiskey bottle. It's not going to make that line of cocaine blow away in the wind before your nose hits it. It's not going to do that. You have to consciously make that decision. And for me, I wasn't like a, a crazy, crazy drunk or anything, but I mean, I wasn't, I probably wasn't a pleasant person to be around. Um, I know that it did, it did, um, numb me to a lot of bullshit that I was going through. And I think that's normal. I think when people are experiencing trauma or loss or difficult times in their life, they don't know how to handle it. So they do turn to the bottle. I've, I've witnessed it hundreds of times with friends of mine and myself, and it is completely normal. But at some point you got to realize you got to be your own man and you got to be your own woman and you got to be able to stand on your own two feet without these fucking crutch or crutches of alcohol or substance abuse to, to lift you up, um, pills, whatever it may be. I've, I've seen it all. And it's, it's a sad thing. Actually, it's, um, I, I watched when I was going through my uh, mental health struggles, when I was still on the job, my doctors tried to prescribe me, uh, with, with feel good medicine. And I told them I didn't want it because I witnessed my fellow firefighters who were on that medicine. They changed. They, they, one day they would be happy, one day they would not be happy. But what happened was they were on this emotional roller coaster of medicine. And I did not want to ride that ride at all. I didn't want my life to become dependent on any kind of pill to make me happy or to get me through the day. So I decided to have the testinal fortitude to just push through it and, and deal with whatever came. Now, on my days off, yeah, I drank and I got very drunk. All the time. I mean, blackout drunk because I had problems sleeping. I had nightmares and we talked about nightmares in the last episode and I was scared to go to sleep. And the only thing that would help me sleep would be to get blackout drunk. And eventually I moved on from that. So look, I'm not saying that don't you ever pick up a substance or don't you ever pick up alcohol? Look, you're going to do whatever, whatever you're going to have to do to be able to get you through. I get it. I've been there. I've done it, but you got to open your eyes at some point and realize, Hey, I can do this on my own. I'm strong enough to do this. And once you realize that, I think that's the easiest part about quitting anything. Once you 100% know in your mind, body, and spirit that you are capable of anything, that you can put that down and move on from that life. Because what, what made me make the decision to stop drinking was this. I took an assessment of my life and I said, all right, what benefit does alcohol have in my life? Where is it helping me? And, and, and man, I couldn't come up with one single fucking scenario where it really, really helped me. It put me to sleep. But the problem was 
I couldn't get out of bed the next day. So I didn't see that as a, as a perk. I mean, it got to the point where I'd lay there for almost two days. The hangovers were killing me. Yeah. I guess you had some fun and you had some laughs and, and, and you acted like an ass and, but that's kind of not cool. Um, I just couldn't find any benefits to it. I, my, my behavior was extremely reckless. I was, a, I was a danger to myself. I was dangerous to other people. Show me where the, that out, show me where alcohol was a benefit to me and I'll pick it back up and, and enjoy it for that benefit. But I just don't, I just didn't see it. And all I saw was cons. I didn't see any pros. It was just all con after con after con after con. And I was like, you know what? I got to do this. And I put it down and I'm sorry to get long winded there, but I think telling my story will help you. If you're struggling with something similar, maybe it'll help you open your eyes to realize, Hey, if I could do it, you can do it. And I think you can. I really do. I think the human mind is so incredibly powerful and I don't have enough data on my little cell phone that I'm recording on to make this video, but I could go on and on about the human mind and how powerful this thing is. It's a, it's actually a beautiful, beautiful thing as I hang on, let me take another swig. This ain't, this isn't me collecting my thoughts this is me trying to get my little post-workout shake in so I don't pass out from lack of nutrients. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I have had multiple messages from people that are um, addicted to alcohol and substances, and they're in uh, emergency services communities, and they reached out to me, and I've tried to turn them on to um, resources in their areas, and I think it's horrible, and I think it's sad when we when we find ourselves in that position that we don't find any anywhere else to go except there. So maybe it is simply hearing a message that can help you turn that around. And the reason I do what I do is because there were no messages when I was struggling. I had nothing to, to, to hang on to, to cling on to, to open my eyes. It was just me day in, day out, hooking and jabbing with my experiences and, and, and all the uh, trauma that I was going through and the behavioral changes with nobody to pull me to the side and say, Travis, maybe we should do this. Maybe we should look at that. And uh, here's this resource. There's that resources, that resource. I didn't have anything. You know what I had? I had a bunch of judgmental people around me looking at me like, man, that guy is fucked up. He's an asshole. And it's, that's not the case. I'm a good human being. I was just hurt. I was injured and I did not know how to heal. And I had to figure it out on my own and I'm still figuring it out. And I'm hoping that if, if you're going through something like that, I'm here with you. We're here figuring this shit out together. And yeah, this is what it's all about. It's about creating our own light, becoming happier, um, realizing that there's much more to life than whatever struggle it is we're going through, or whatever hard time we don't think we can, we can overcome. I, uh, yeah, I talked about that comfortable, comfortable misery last episode, you know, being stuck in this environment that we think is, is so horrible, but it's, you know, our, our vision is so skewed because that's all we see. And we don't see all these blessings around us. And that's what we got to start doing. I'm telling you it's all around us. And that's going to lead me into my next point. Now we may run a little long in this podcast. I try to keep them 35 minutes and below, but you know, if I, I guess I could go back and edit out the glory hole <laughs> um, business plan and save myself about five minutes, but I'm not doing that. So I want to want to transition into or segue into um, investing into our mental wealth. It's tricky to say because I initially want to say mental health, right? But what are we doing to become more wealthy in mind, body, and spirit. How are you investing in your mind, body, and spirit to ensure that you have longevity with your mental health? You know, we all think about that from a, a financial standpoint. We all think about investing in our future. I know I do. I know a lot of people that I know do. They're always talking about money and finances and investments and this and that. But I've never once heard somebody say, man, I want to invest in my mental health because I don't think we really think along those lines. I think what happens is we just kind of deal with shit when it comes and we're not prepared for it. We've never really thought about how we're going to handle it. 
and then we're slapped in the face. And as there's that old saying, piss poor planning prevents, wait, piss poor planning prevents piss poor performance, right? I'm not saying you got to go out and plan for Armageddon, but one day you're going to get rocked. Everybody does. And how are you going to handle that? We're going to turn to the bottle. We're going to turn it to cocaine. We're going to turn to, you know, substances. Are you going to be the customer that visits the mobile glory hole, <laughs> right? Like become a mobile glory hole addict. I don't know. But I want to talk to you about mental wealth. It's important to me, and I hope it's important to you if you're listening to this podcast. Um, like I say, I have a ton of notes, but I, I work better free flow, and I'm going to kind of look, glance over these and, and get a couple of um, bullet points and then try to go with it. So I have a, a bullet point here, and it's a question. What is wealth to you? Like when you hear the word wealth, what do you, what do you think of? I'll admit for the longest part of my life, when I thought about wealth, being wealthy, I thought about money. I thought about material things. Honestly, all the things that didn't matter. That's what I thought about. But over the course of my life, my idea of wealth has completely changed from material things to experiences and adventure and moments in time. Because like I've said in previous episodes, You only get so much time in this life, so invest in it wisely. Use your time as an investment, right? When we're laying there on that bed, wherever it may be, when you're taking your final breaths, I promise you, you're not going to be thinking about money. You're going to be wishing you had one more thing in life. And you know what that one thing you're going to wish you had? Fucking time. I guarantee you everybody thinks about that. And if you have any regrets, you're probably going to regret that you didn't use your time more wisely. Let me say that again, that you didn't use your time more wisely or you weren't more stingy with your time. In investing, a lot of times time is money, right? So if we're investing in our mental health, you gotta think about it like that too. My time is of value. Don't let don't let people steal your valuable time from you. You have to invest in people just like you would investing in your final future or your financial future. Excuse me. Don't invest in the wrong people. Don't keep the wrong investments. That means friendships, relationships in your life. There's a thing called assets and there's a thing called liabilities in investing and in real estate, right? And if you don't know what an asset is, an asset is something of value. It's something that brings value to you, your company, your business, And it makes you prosperous. And then there's a thing called liability. A liability is something that does the complete opposite. It takes away from your company. It, It makes you less prosperous. So if you're in business and you had more liabilities than you did have, than you had assets, chances are you're not going to be in business that long at all. The more assets you have, the more longevity you're probably going to have in your business. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And we have to look at that same investment strategy as investing in our mental well-being to create that mental wealth. You have to get rid of those liabilities. You have to cut them. Know when an investment is bad and cut it. Cut it now before it costs you too much later. The longer you hold a bad investment, the more it's going to cost you. And this is me being transparent with you. I speak about being an asset and a liability because I've been both and I'm not proud to say that it's embarrassing, but it's the truth. I know what it's like to be a complete liability in a relationship with someone meaning a friend. I know what it's like for a friend to discover that I was a liability with his happiness and to have to completely sever those ties for the rest of our lives. I've experienced that because I was the, the the toxic one. I brought all the bullshit. I brought with when I was struggling with everything I was struggling with, I was not a great person. I'm not I didn't bring any value into his life and he finally realized after a 20-year friendship that it was time to cut his losses and move on. But you know what? Good for him. And I'm proud of him to this day even though we'll probably never speak again. I've reached out I've addressed it. 
I have um, accepted full responsibility for the way that I was. And he decided that that's just not good enough. Okay. And that's his prerogative. And I'm still proud of him because he knows what's best for his mental well being in his future. And if that doesn't include me, then tough shit. And that's how you got to be. Great business leaders don't become great by being the most friendly fucking people and the most giving people on earth. They have to make tough decisions and you got to make tough decisions in your mental well-being as well. When it comes to your life, don't let people drag you down. Don't let, don't have a friend like, like me, like I used to be. Don't let that friend suck you dry of your mental well-being. Invest in yourself, cut the ties. There are plenty of great people out there that would love to invest in your friendship. Find those people. Find the people that want to invest in your friendship and become an asset to your life. And you become an asset to theirs. And the only reason I speak about this is because I've lived it. When it comes to flipping my papers here, when it comes to investing in our mental well-being, what are some things that you can do outside of you know cutting toxicity out What are some things that you can do? Have you been selfish in a good way? Like what I mean by that is I'll tell you something I had to do. And I've I've talked about this on episodes. I, I was craving happiness. I was so desperate to find something to make me happy when I was just a hollow shell of a man pretending to be happy. I couldn't find anything. I was buying everything I could and nothing made me happy. No matter what I bought, I bought a fucking, um, mountain bike. I live, I live a mile from the beach on the East coast. You cut, show me on a map where there's a mountain within four hours of here. Go ahead. I'll wait. Um, but I rode that thing around here and I was happy for about a week and then it just sat in the shed. Then I bought a camera and I enjoyed photography and I did that. And I think I did it very well. And I went out and I, um, I did wildlife photography and I loved it and it bought me a little bit of happiness for a little while. But there was always something that I was craving and I was trying not to be selfish towards my family by, by, by getting this thing. So I was always trying to be financially independent, financially wealthy, and I was doing very well for myself. Right. And I wanted to, when I died, when I moved on from this life, I wanted to be able to leave my daughter something because I started from absolutely nothing and I didn't want them to start that way. Not that that's a bad thing. But I didn't want to think of my daughters struggling the way that I've had to struggle. And I think parenting, I think we all think along those lines, pretty parallel. I would think, I would hope so. Um, So I was doing everything I could to make sure that we were on a path to financial independence, but I wasn't taking care of my mental health the way that I really should have been doing. And by that, I mean, I was obtaining, I was buying assets for financial purposes. I was, but I was creating more liabilities in, in my mental health. I was buying rental properties. I was doing very well. And I always wanted this farm. And you've heard me talk about this farm on other episodes, but I would not pull the trigger on buying more property because I thought that it was going to hurt my family. I thought it would be better to leave my family more money and more, more actual physical assets than it would be for me to help myself and become the best father and husband and friend in all the relationships that I had going on. I thought it'd be better just to leave assets and money behind. Okay. I was so focused on financial wealth and versus mental wealth, but I always knew in the back of my mind, if I could get away from the place that makes me sick, right? Charleston, South Carolina is where I live. Charleston, South Carolina makes me sick. It's it's a great town. It's been voted number one place to live like seven, eight years in a row. It's a wonderful place, but it did a lot of, a lot of damage to me. And I always wanted to get away from here. And I found every excuse I could to not buy another property away from here. I wanted land and I wanted, um, a farm outside of this area, but I would find every reason not to, because in my mind, I knew if I did that, then that's taking away from my family. And that's taken away from them potentially having um, a leg up after I pass. But it finally got so bad that I did it. I said, you know what? I have to be selfish for me. I have to do this. And if I don't, 
I'm a dead man anyway. And would my daughters appreciate me leaving them a big fat bank account? Or do you think that they want those experiences with their daddy and they want their daddy absolutely 100% happy and they want to see their daddy living his life to the absolute fullest, doing what he loves every day. And when I had that conversation with myself, I said, you know what? It's time to be a little bit selfish. And I sold all of my assets, all of them, every single one of them, everything I'd worked many, many years to do. And I sold them and I bought a damn farm. And I'm going to tell you right now, the best thing I ever did. And I'm not saying that you got to go do that because I had a different set of circumstances that I was working with. What I'm saying is what can you do right now, today, this week, something you've always wanted to do and do it for yourself. You need to do it and stop making excuses for why you cannot be happy and start, stop making excuses on why you shouldn't do this thing, whatever it may be and go do it. Because it's going to make you better. I promise you, whatever it is. If I mean, it's, if it's a something as simple as buying a pair of damn shoes, go get the damn shoes. You're not going to, you're not going to go without your, your lights will still be on next week. Whoo boy, stuff gets deep. Sometimes I'm, I hope that all makes sense. Cause I wasn't looking at notes, man. I just kind of go with where I'm thinking and I'm hoping I can paint that picture with it, with a mental brush, if you will. Um, yeah, I've covered everything. So, yep, I covered it all. I think this episode's going to be just fine. And we're going to be under the time limit. So, I, I, man, I wish I could have a hotline to take some calls. But this won't be out for four more weeks. I'm four weeks ahead right now. That's how far out I'm recording. And I'm still looking at getting more gear and in, just bear with me because these things are going to be on YouTube. So I'm finally learning how to get that up. And I have, a, it's, it's, you got to do all this crazy um, stuff. You got to take the audio that I'm speaking into the microphone. You got to delete the audio out of the video. And then you got to layer the audio from the microphone in the video. And dude, my dumb caveman ass, I'm having a hard time with that. I need an assistant. What do you guys think, man? Drop me some DMS. Uh, let me know what, how, you know, how this is going, because I don't know how to switch gears and change things up without your input. I do know this. I do know Facebook and Instagram are kicking my ass with their algorithms. Y'all ever heard that song um, by Gloria Estevan? The rhythm is gonna get you. The rhythm is, I rewrote that bitch. The algorithm's gonna get you. The algorithm is gonna get you tonight. It won't let me see. It won't let you guys see a lot of my posts. So I think the only way to see it is you got to go to um, my profile and click favorites or so, I don't know. There's some kind of way around it or just keep coming back to my page. But look, I'd appreciate if you guys could just keep spreading the word and help, you know, when you get one of these episodes and, and if something resonates, don't just let it fall on deaf ears. Throw it up in your, um, in your story on Instagram and tag me in it and tell other people why they should come check this thing out. Um, I think it'll continue to grow. I think it'll continue to get a lot better over time. I'm brand new in this and kind of all over the place, but that's, I kind of like it like that. I don't like, um, beating one topic down into the ground for too long. I really enjoy switching gears. It's like my comedy event. When I'm on stage, I don't go up there and talk about one thing for an hour. I talk about like 35, 40 different damn things. I'm, I love switching gears. Uh, as, as usual, my book, create your own light. It's on sale, uh, amazon.com. You can go find it. And as usual, if you haven't left your review yet and you bought that book, please go leave one. We're, we're in the two seventies now on reviews and I'm just trying to get over 300. That'd be, that'd be really huge. Tell your friends about it. Um, other than that, I'm out of here. So you guys have a great day. I uh, hope you found this, this resourceful again. I can't do what I do without you. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you're part of this little uh, thing that we got going on, and I hope we can continue to kick some ass together. Y'all have a great week. Talk to you soon.